also a part of this confederacy. Now I perceive they all three have been joined to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injuries from you, most ungrateful me, have you with ease contrived to bait for this foul derision? Is all the counsel we two had shared, the sister vows, the hours we had chose, the hasty footed time, oh, it is all forgot. We heard you are like two artificial gods. Have our meals not fulfilled in one sample, one flower sitting on one cushion, full warbling on one song, both in one key? As our hands, sighs, voices, minds were incorporated, so we grew together like a double cherry, seemingly parted but in union and partition. Two lovely berries on one stem, so two seeming bodies, but one heart, crowned unto one, like coats in a heraldry. You will rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorn of your poor friend. It is not friendly. Tis not maidenly. Our sex as well as I be chose you for it. Though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. If you so, you scorn me. Have you not set your love, Lysander, to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And made your other love, Demetrius, who even but now to spur me with his foot, to call me goddess, nymph, celestial, rare, precious, divine. Why he says to she he hates? Why Lysander deny your love so deep and tender within his soul? But by your sitting on, by your consent, I do not so increase as you to love on love. This you should rather pity than despise. I understand not. What you mean by this? Hey, do persevere, counterfeit sad, make mouths upon me, and when I turn my back, weep. This for well carry shall be chronicled. If you had any deep grace or manners, you would not make me such an argument. But fare ye well, tis a fortune by your fault, which death or absence shall soon remedy. Oh. Hey, Helen, hear my excuse, my love, my life, for Helena. Oh, excellent! Oh, sweet, not scorn her so. She cannot ensure you, I can help. Thou canst confound no more than she can ensure you. I threat that no more power than her we curse. Helen, I love thee by my life, I do, for that which I will lose for thee, to prove him false that says I love thee not. Silence, I love thee more than he can do. Withdraw and prove it too. Now, quick, go! Lysander, where to tend all this? Oh, wait, you. No, no, he'll seem to break loose. Take on as you would follow. But yet, come not. You are a tame man. Go! Hang off, left cat. Thou bird, thou vile thing, let loose, or I will shake thee from me like a serpent. Why are you grown so rude? What changes this, sweet love? Thy love? Out, Tommy Carter, out! Out, love medicine, hated potion hence. Do you not? Jest? Yes, soft. And so do you. I, by my life, I never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, be out of full question or doubt, tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh, you juggler, you came of blossom, you thief of love. What? Have you come by the night and stolen my love's heart from him? Oh, fine, I'll be. Have you no manners? No touch of bashfulness? What other impatient answers will you tear from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit. You chug, you giant. Why so? I am that way goes the game. Now I see that she has been compared between our statures, and she has urged her height, and with her personage, her short personage. Oh, I pursue. She has prevailed with him. What? Are you going so low in his esteem because I am so high and so grand? How tall am I, thou stunted sapling? How tall am I? I am not yet so tall that my nails can reach to thine eyes! Oh, I pray, thee, though you mock me, do not ever harm me thus. I am white, white, timid nay, do not let her strike me. You may think because she towers above me that I can stand up to her might. Tower? Hark again! Evermore did I love you, fair Hermia. Never wrong do you say that love is Demetrius. 
I told him of your suffering is worth. For love he followed you. For love I followed him. But he hath chid me hence to threaten me, to spur me, strike me, nay, to kill me too. So you will let me go to Athens where I bear my folly back. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. What gets you gone? Who is it that hinders you? A foolish heart that I leave here behind. What? With Lysander? With Demetrius! Be not afraid, Helena. She shall not harm thee. Oh, sir, she shall not. Though you take her his part. Oh, when she is angry, she's keen and shrewd. She's a bit simply to school. And you may think, because she is tall enough to touch the sky, that she thinks she's fierce. Tall again. Nothing but fine tone. How are you so far from us? Let me come to her. Get gone, you giant. You tyrant tree that shakes the ground. You. You ain't born. You are too officious on her behalf that scores their services. Let her alone not speak of Helena. For if thou dost intend to oh, never so little show of any love to her, thou shalt but buy it. What should I do? Harm her? Kill her? Although I hate her, I'm not harm her so. What greater harm would you do me than hate? Hate me? Wherefore, oh me, what moves my love? Am I not Romeo? Or not you, Lysander? I am to her now as I was a while. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me, why then you left me? Oh, me, the gods forbid in earnest, shall I say? Hermia, I do hate thee, and you do hate me. All of thou dares to try her flight, of thine or mine, who's most in Helena? Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek by jaw. Oh, you mistress! All this going is wrong with you! Nay, go not back. I trust you no more. I will stay in your company no more. Your hands may be quick to hold the bread, but my legs are long enough to run away. I am amazed and know not what to say. 